Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending November the 12th, 2021. Well, bullish sentiment abounds in the markets despite the daily close. So uh, some of the indexes, the Dow particularly, but nobody's really interested in the Dow because of its composition uh, in, in terms of analytical purposes for analytical reasons. But uh, it's it's ending down for the week. Uh, maybe so maybe some of the other ones are uh, right now, but that's a technical thing. Really, all we saw. Throughout the week was profit taking by and large. Uh, nothing's really changed a lot from my analysis from last week. Everything is still very, very bullish. A lot of bu bullish sentiment abounds. Let me say it that way. So, uh, so uh, stay stay in there and uh, and wait for next week. Now, there's a lot of inflation concerns to be sure, and I'm not saying that that I have a, a perfect crystal ball here by any means. But uh, uh, for the technicals, it looked like we engaged in some profit taking. And uh, the, the, the bulls just taking a breath and probably uh, run on out for this early Santa Claus rally and hopefully extends it into uh, mid to late December. So that's what we're hoping for. We just uh, trade the, as the evidence and the markets present themselves to us. Okay, this week, what I wanted to talk to, the P word this week is portfolio, okay, and portfolio management to be sure. And uh, Morningstar now has uh, uh, released a report on the 4% rule. Now, if you've been to any of my classes or heard any of my presentations before, uh, we've been teaching for years now that the 4% rule is dead. It's gone. I mean, there's no, no evidence to continue it on really post-2009 uh, uh, Great Recession and the great financial crisis. So what happens there is the, the big thing, well, here, let me say it this way. Simply stated, if you're not familiar with it, the 4% the, the, the rule is uh, you take 4% of your overall portfolio balance, the total value in your investment portfolio, in the first year of retirement, and then you should be, if you adjust that for inflation, you should be able to continue to do that year out over year through a 30-year retirement and only have about an 86% chance of, uh, 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 of uh, the portfolio lasting the full 30 years. Interesting. Morningstar has now come back up with a 3.3% a rule is what they had. So if you, pl uh, if you apply their new rule then to the situation, <laughs> if you had a million dollar portfolio for easy math, then you should be able to take $33,000 per year in the first year and then adjust that for inflation. And that should uh, theoretically last you uh, through a 30 year retirement. They're saying that that boosts the probability to 90%. So awesome. How many of you are going to get on a plane when I say, hey, look, welcome aboard. This plane has a 90% chance of making it to the other landing point safely, all right? 90% probability of a successful outcome. You're probably going to be bailing off the plane, right? Because even 10% is uh, most people find unacceptable in that. So why then would we make that any different for our money, our portfolio? Arguably not. So what's the problem with the the the, the four percent rule and even the three point three percent rule is, is what they're advocating now. The real problems there are, are are the markets. Okay, the markets are vastly different. Bill Bangan, it's not like he was my friend or anything. It's just easier to say Bill than it is William for me. It's too many between syllables. Okay, but William Bangan was a uh, uh, an analyst that in, in the 90s out in California put together you know hundreds of thousands of Monte Carlo analysis simulations came up with the four percent rule back then but back then bonds were yielding five and a half percent look ever since the 2009 great recession ever since that financial crisis and the stimulus that was used to get us out of that follow that up with the pandemic stimulus there's too, the deficit is too large, okay? Interest rates have to be down. So there's no way that we can get 5.5% yields out of bonds because <clears throat> without taking inordinate amounts of risk, if you're going to take that much risk, you might as well just be at 100% equities, right? So fixed income doesn't behave as it used to. And probably, probably uh, uh, out into, for the next 30 years, probably bonds are not going to behave the way that they used to, or certainly not the way that they did in the 90s. So the markets are behavior, the behavior is changing, equity behavior is vastly changing. Uh, you can count on, as a rule of thumb, about 30% of any index move uh, being uh, a total return is being due to dividends, okay? 
Dividends not necessarily uh, you know, to be counted on, certainly not the way that fixed income are, as well as uh, we're having to replace bonds, fixed income, traditional fixed income, with bond replacements such as uh, preferred stocks and uh, other, other substitute alternative investments that will consistently pay those uh, incomes. Uh, this study uh, used as a, as a, a, mox, a proxy for inflation about 2.21% uh, going forward. I like to use 3%. Uh, current rates are arguably 227 Break even right now is about 264 and it has been for all, uh, several weeks there. So if I'm going to do that and I'm, and, and I'm going to look at next year's Social Security being hiked at a, a cost of living adjustment of 592 then if I put all those together, I, and I'm going to be conservative, let's just then say that we don't not going to outguess the markets and just call inflation at 3% and going it from there. But here's the thing. Without taking inordinate amounts of risks, like over-investing in the equities markets and preferred stocks by definition, uh, you know, in order to get the kind of dividend yield that we want, that's more risk. If you're just going in totally into index ETFs, then 70% of that move is going to be based on uh, uh, every year is going to be based on price performance, okay? Then you're looking at 30% dividends. These are simply not the same type of reliable uh, little train that could type of, of, of investments that existed in the 90s that are going to be able to yield that dependable, um, you know, 3.3% and certainly not 4% consistently over, over the time frame that we need. But here's the other problem with 3% requires tremendous discipline. What happens when you get a hiccup? What happens when you get those one of the two types of uh, expenses that comes along in, in retirement, either a shock expense, oh my, I have to replace the roof, or I have to do something with the car, or uh, the plumbing went bad, that, that comes up pretty, pretty frequently. And then you have those uh, aspirational expenses, that, uh, that trip, that special thing that you wanted to do for one of your family members, et cetera, et cetera. The 3% rule, even the 4% rule required tremendous discipline, but if you're gonna, if you're gonna really trim, it, trim it down to 3.3, 3%, it's expensive. Uh, if you just sit there and do the math as to what the type of portfolio you have to have in order to get a consistent 3.3%, uh, uh, out of there that, that is going to allow somebody to live above the poverty line, okay, it's a very expensive proposition. Bottom line, it's all good news. We can help you out. We can beat the, we can, we can help you uh, turbocharge your withdrawal rates far above 3%, okay, far above 3.3% uh, most often. And we can also give you a very consistent, reliable bond substitutes to take care of that fixed income component that just isn't the same as it was when all those uh, conventional models were being built. So Morningstar's got a great report on it. Read it. I'll put the uh, hyperlink to it at the bottom of the video. Anyway, check out our email. It's good stuff in there this time. The recipes are outstanding as always. Stay happy. We're getting closer to the holiday season. Be happy and I'll see you next week.